you. Good morning, everyone. We would like to thank the ABC, especially Haley, DeWalt, all sponsors and industry partners for another successful year of the CMC competition. My name is Davey O'Haran, Safety Manager at Trinity Construction, and I would like to take this time to start this meeting like we start all our meetings with a brief safety moment. Since a lot of us are calling in uh, from our homes today, I would like everyone to take the chance after this meeting to check that they have at least one fire extinguisher and at least one first aid kit in their home. If not, we highly advise that you go pick one up immediately. We would love to congratulate KDC and Westdale for this signature product, a fantastic addition to the Dallas skyline. We at Trinity Construction are extremely honored and extremely excited at the prospect of being, such a, being part of such a prestigious project. This is going to be an amazing addition to the Deep Elm neighborhood, Dallas, Texas. And with that, I'd like to hand it over to Robert Kreitz to introduce the rest of our team. Thank you, Davey. And I must say, Trinity Construction Leadership has comprised a grade A team for this project. We're the Corn Shell Division out of our Dallas office. So a quick glance at what Trinity Construction is all about. We have performed $1 billion in corn shell revenue over the past 10 years. And what better way to evidence that other than our client satisfaction rate of 96%, which directly translates to our repeat client rate of 88%. And I just want to stop and say that those relationships with our repeat clients are what really keep our business going. That's, that's what drives us. And speaking of relationships, past projects, we've actually done four past projects for KDC and West Steel since 2013. Over those past projects, we've cumulatively saved 19 weeks of time, $6.1 million in cost savings, and $3.2 million worth of VE options exercised. Continuing with past projects, I'd like to touch on two of these projects, but these are four past projects that were not contracted through KDC or Westdale, but have a striking similarities with Epic One. Beginning with Legacy West, this is a corn shell building uh, utilizing cast in place concrete and actually the same Harmon curtain wall system as Epic One. And it also featured the same engineer that engineered Epic One. This project had an end date of March 21st, 2021, and all of our project team worked on this project, so we are anxious and ready to get started on yours. Going to PwC Tower, it was another corn shell building with cast in place concrete and the same curtain wall system. It was a 20 story office tower with a parking structure attached to it. Um, so it's very similar to Epic One. And once again, our entire team has experience um, with this project as well. Here you can see our organizational chart clearly outlined, and I wanna be quick to point out uh, both our vendors and our trade partners as their continued dedication and hard work. Um, it's really driven us to the point we are today. Our cumulative success would not be possible without our vendors and dedicated trade partners. Here you can see our clear resource commitment to the owners. Uh, starting from left and going right, you can see our key team members, their arrival and departure date um, from the project and then the different phase of construction which they'll be working. We have dedicated 10 full-time employees uh, for the construction phase with orange delineating full-time employment and other colors delineating either as required or part-time. At this moment, I'd like to pass it off to one of the most experienced and smartest guys I know. And he paid me to say it, but I personally believe he's the best estimator in Texas and maybe even of the region, Mr. Daniel Pilar. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, before I start, I just want to take one quick second and say uh, the cost for that compliment was not included in our overall price for the Epic One. Uh, but OK, to continue on, my name is Daniel Kuhar. Again, I'm the estimator for this project, and I'm very excited to present you with Trinity Construction's estimate for Epic One. Based on our pricing for step one and step two, we are confident that our team can deliver this project within budget. We are excited to be working with KDC again and have reflected how important this relationship is with us through our uh, very aggressive CM fee of 2.95%. Here you can see we've summarized the cost of a couple major scopes of work for you to review. We spent a great deal of time getting to know this project and in doing our due, due diligence, we've made an extensive list of clarifications and assumptions in our proposal. I'd like to take the time now to go over a couple important ones with you. First of all, our electrical scope does not include any low voltage. This is covered in communications and also in electronic safety and security specialties. We have provided allowances in accordance with the RFIs and specifications. And in accordance with spec section 122, we have also provided you with unit costs for adds and deducts of concrete piers based on the actual level of the bearing strata discovered during construction. Here at Trinity Construction, we take great pride in our self-performed work. Through self-performing concrete work, we found that we are able to better control the time and costs of our projects. 
we have traditionally seen time savings of anywhere from six to nine percent. We look forward to being able to deliver these savings to Epic One through our self-performed scope on this project. Now, I want to take a minute here and say it, it's easy for me to throw all these numbers at you, but it's important for you as an owner to understand why you should trust our number and why should you? Well, first of all, we're a data centric company that benchmarks all of our projects to make sure we're in sync with the market. So through our study, we have found that projects of a similar scope land somewhere in the range of $120 to $130 per square foot. Now, if we go to the next slide, we can see that our price for Epic One uh, for the first step coming in at just around $129 a square foot and our step two price of $127 per square foot, we are confident that we're providing you with an accurate and reasonable number. Through working with you and our other clients in the past, we've realized the cost of leasable space and other key metrics are very important to you as a developer, and therefore we have included them here and in our proposal for your review. Now I'd like to hand it off to the man that wishes I included a brand new DeWalt set of uh, power tools in this estimate for him, our superintendent, Will. Thank you for that introduction, Daniel. Uh, we are reconsidering your invitation to our world famous Pierce family barbecue upcoming after to hearing that as he mentioned my name is will pierce i am one of the lead superintendents here at trinity construction and one of the key things that we like to do early on in the project is identify risks in our project that as we have to attack them because our early success is what will determine our lasting success those risks are supply chain disruption underground utilities permitting and contractor coordination such as the neighboring site However, I would like to assure everyone that our team is equipped to handle these risks and we have a plan in place. Expediting working with utility contractors to expediter services for permitting and transparent open communication is the key. Once we have controlled all these risks, we can transition into the vertical. One of our specialties here at Trinity Construction is our ability to self-perform concrete. The success of this project will rely on the execution of our concrete scope and the cycle times are key insight into that success. Shown here is the cycle time of the basement and podium level, B2 through seven. We will break this up into four pores. On our, similarly, on our floors eight through 16, the cycle time is adjusted to a 14 day cycle in which we have two pores. On our concrete pours, they are such a large part of our schedule and will help determine the big picture timeline of EPIC-1. We propose to finish this project in just over 25 months, starting in April 2021 and a completion in May 2023, with key milestones noted here. As we move into phase one of our plan, which is demolition and excavation, we plan on sheet piling the edge along Pacific Avenue and sloped excavation are on the remaining sides. Looking forward to phase two of the project, with our initial site work being completed, we will begin our structure. The parking structure is where we will have the 28 day cycle broken up into four pours. And once we transition to the office levels, we will then switch to the 14 day pour. As you can see, the curtain wall, it begins to go up after the 12th floor is poured and topping out will be at 20 months into the project. And this will be how we finish out the project. Now, I would like to turn your attention over to the one guy that everybody loves to see on our job sites, Davey O'Haren, our safety manager. Thank you, Will. I guess that must mean I'm just doing my job right. Um, jumping right into our demo and excavation plan, I've implemented a robust plan that's gonna include ramps, slope walls, and a secure safety barrier around that deep basement excavation. Uh, we're going to use an extensive hydro vacuum process, especially uh, adjacent to Pacific Avenue, to identify any uh, utilities that uh, haven't yet been uh, made known to us. Moving on to our uh, our crane and hoisting safety plan, uh, we're going to put in place a, a plan to prevent any incidents. That's going to include swinging no live loads over any active streets in Deep Ellum. We're also going to keep active logbooks of all of our tagline utilization on every pick and all spotters. We at Trinity Construction are proud to share that we've had no crane and hoisting incidents in the past six years. We know how important and how historic the Deep Elm neighborhood is in Dallas, Texas. And because of that, every employee on site is gonna be trained and sensitized to working in such a historic neighborhood in our safety orientation. Additionally, we know how rowdy Deep Elm can get uh, late at night. So we're gonna keep a very secure site 
we're going to have the site fence and 24 hour security uh, make sure no one uh, wanders onto our site our next two safety focus areas are fall hazard safety and electrical safety or fall hazard safety we've identified two specific areas uh, where we think fall hazards might arise, and those are on those floating tables and on the slabs that will be poured on top of those floating tables. Because of that, we're going to have those floating tables uh, barricaded at all times, and the second those slabs are safe to walk on and before those floating tables are gone, we're going to build safety barriers around those. On the electrical safety front, once we get this building up and energized, we're going to have mandatory NFPA 70E training for all employees who are going to be working in the same uh, room as any energized equipment make sure that everyone's operating safely in those spaces we take the same philosophy with safety that we take to qa qc and that is getting the job done right the first time because of that we have a rework rate of under one percent compared to an industry average of 4.5 percent a 4.5 percent rework rate on an 80 million dollar project can be up to 3.6 million dollars so that's just a glimpse at some of the savings that you could have by choosing trinity we achieve such a low rework rate by working with our trade partners and waterproofing consultants at excellent system mock-ups that are tested to make sure we can put them in right and they'll work the first time. Additionally, we use system BIM clash detection to make sure we are aware of any issues that may arise months before they arise so we can remedy those issues. And that is our totally quality, total quality management plan that achieves such a low rework rate. With that, I'll give it to Robert to close us out. Thank you for that awesome comparison, Davey. Um, I'd like to take this one last moment just to say thank you all again for inviting us to this presentation today. We look forward to building our long-standing relationship um, with a signature project in Dallas with an A-plus team through KDC and Westdale. We're excited about this project and we're ready to go. At this juncture, I'd like to field any questions that you all may have. Amanda, I'll go ahead and turn it over to your team. Thank you, guys. Sure. Um, good job, guys. I want to start there. You guys did a great job. A um, couple questions for you. Um, at the very beginning, you talked about a 96% client satisfaction rate. How, how did you come to that number? Um, do you guys do surveys or, or how, how did you, I guess, arrive at the 96%? Um, and are you guys trying to get to 100%? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Um, and I'll actually, I'll answer that question. Um, so we actually provide surveys or polls for our clients at the end of every job. And that's just our cumulative um, client satisfaction rate that we've achieved over the years. Uh, to answer the second portion of your question, we are gradually working towards 100% because, I mean, we're not satisfied until we're perfect, but um, we're, we're, we're working there. We're not there yet, but we're working on it. I like it. Um, have you guys seen, right now in the industry, the steel market is, is pretty volatile. Uh, when you guys were putting together your proposal, were you guys seeing any issues with the steel market in regards to lead times or price escalation? Um, another great question. Uh, I'd like to pass that over um, to our lead superintendent, Will Pierce, to respond. Yes, yeah, so that, that is a really great question because we have witnessed that steel, because of the pandemic and the supply chain disruptions, steel has become an increased lead time and also price escalated item, um, which we have through our scheduling process, we allowed for adjustments to be made there and uh, made sure that we weren't completely sticking to a very strict schedule on that, giving us some extra lead time for procurement. And then also with cost, we adjusted per uh, what we've seen relatively recently with COVID. If, if okay. I can add. Yep. If I can add to that for a minute. So we, we do work very closely with our suppliers for this project. And the one we're working, uh, some the steel providers we're working with now, we keep in close contact with them because obviously they're going to be on the front lines of that. So we make sure that as soon as they know, we know so that we can pass on that information and react. That's great. Um, my next question was about some of the risks you guys listed. Uh, you spoke about permitting. Uh, how many permits are you guys tracking to pull and what is the time frame to get those um, essentially pulled with the city? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I'll actually answer that myself once again. In regard to permitting, um, we're pulling all of the general permits and then some specific ones. Um, mainly, we're going to have to pull some road closure permits along the way, uh, crane construction permits, uh, FAA permits to ensure that we're not in the flight path of any uh, planes nearby. 
But in as far as uh, regards to permitting through the city, we have allowed uh, 30 days, so about one month um, to receive those permits. And we're also keeping close contact with any other uh, contractors on site with regard to their permits and other utility companies. Great. Uh, one more question before I have hand it off to the other judges. Um, in your proposal, you talked about a, your, your drone program. Can you elaborate if you guys are utilizing that on this project and how um, you intend to use drones? Yes, yes, thank you very much. That's another great question. Um, I'll drive that over to our lead superintendent, Will Pierce, to speak on that as well. Yes, so the drone, the drones are a, quite a new uh, technology that we've been incorporating into all of our jobs in the recent past, which we have utilized. Uh, all of our pilots have FAA Part 107 exam licenses, and they use drone deploy as well as other uh, DJI um, technologies and DJI drones as we work with them as a corporate partner. And so they we have incorporated that as a standard feature for all of our jobs at this point going forward to assist with BIM modeling as well as uh, dot, um, dot modeling as well, which gives great updates for not only us, but the owners to track. If I can add to that for just a second. I think one, one important thing with the drones too is at the end of the day, we like to take good pictures of the projects because that's important for you as a client. You know, We wanna make your project look good and we wanna give you the resources that you need to promote your, your finished project. So it's just one other thing. Awesome, thank you guys. Thank you. Tommy, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Haley. Uh, thank you, Trinity team. Uh, the question uh, related to the estimate, um, we realized we didn't provide a line item on the, on the breakdown form for general liability insurance. Can you confirm that you have that included? Um, and if so, um, what, what's the wrong value of that, approximate value of that general liability insurance line item? All right, awesome question. Um, I'll go ahead and direct that to our lead estimator, Mr. Kuhar. Uh Thank you, yeah, that's a, Fantastic question, because right, we're not going to do this job without general liability insurance. So on our proposal, we have included general liability insurance. We didn't include that in the overall price because there wasn't a line item for it. And we were afraid to you know, mess with any of the bid documents as stated in the RFP. So it is included in there. It's included right next to the, the summaries there. So the rough order of magnitude cost for that general liability insurance is around $670,000. Okay, thank you. And so to clarify, do I need do we need to add that six hundred and seventy or six hundred and eighty thousand to your total at the bottom, or is that already included in the total? It, it would need to be added. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one other question uh, on the estimate. Um, this one's going towards the so the best estimator in Texas here. Um, <laughs> we've got. Uh, uh, it looks like y'all have around seven hundred thousand uh, dollars included for building permit costs. How do you calculate that value, and are you confident that it's correct? So yeah, so we the city of Dallas actually has um, a template that you can go through and you can you can do the overall building permits for that job. I, I think the line item you're referring to also includes uh, some of our lead fees for that, and most importantly, that price includes our accelerator that we have for this project. So, you know, that is an added fee on top of our permits uh, because we wanna get those moving fast. We don't want that to be a holdup for this project. So all of those put together, we, we feel that that's an accurate representation. All right, th thank you for those clarifications. I'll turn it over to another judge here for questions. All right, this is Chris. Uh, one question I've got, uh, staying on the estimate, you shown, I believe it was roughly $3 million in contingency. Can you elaborate uh, what that contingency would be utilized for? That's that's a great question. Um, I, could, you, could you restate the question, please? I'm sorry, I, I broke up a little bit. The contingency line item that you had, uh, can you elaborate on what that would be utilized for? Okay. 
Mr. Kumar? Yeah, great question. So the 3%, uh, that contingency fee, that's included, that was included in the bid form uh, as stated for the RFP for the owner's contingency. So that's a number the owner has come up with. Um, that's basically in there for the owner to have assurance that we're gonna complete this job on time. And that if we don't, for some reason, you know, we we fail to perform or whatever reason, they have that contingency in there to then, you know, go out and hire the next uh, contractor to complete us in our in our place. It is, as the owner, do you look at it that I'm able to utilize it for design changes or is it uh, for your direct cost work? Um, that That is a good question. There's there's a little bit of play in there for changes. I mean, obviously very significant changes. That is gonna be something we have to reevaluate our price for if it's, it's something significant like that. It, there is a little bit of allowance in there for design changes and, and little things, you know, if we're changing, uh, you know, a couple fit and finishes here and there, you know, there there is some slush in there. That's what that's for. But yeah, any big changes, we, we do need to reevaluate the schedule for that. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, this Brian, is did Jim. you have any questions? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, my, my biggest thing, um, one one great uh, presentation, all the visuals were awesome and the videos were, were really neat at walking us through everything. Um, as far as uh, tools for uh, quality control, do you guys have a program that you guys plan on using that um, will be able to, you guys will be able to interface with the owners um, and kind of a follow-up question to that is, do you have a training program to get us up to speed on how to use it so we can go turn over a good product? Yeah, so that's, that's an awesome question. Um, so I'm actually gonna direct that to our safety manager who covered QAQC as well, Mr. Davey O'Hare. Uh, thank you, great question. Um, obviously, we're gonna interface with the, the owner at all times on all quality issues. Um, involve y'all in the process long before any sort of uh, a punch walk might occur. Um, as far as uh, technology to share and uh, training of that technology, um, we have developed our own sort of software that we use to manage our um, uh, our quality uh, assurance issues. Um, we call that TrinCon. It's an app we can use on our iPads, uh, take pictures, um, compare anything that uh, is as built with uh, any pre-existing drawings. Um, we can create a. Uh, we have a training program um, that we can update for this site and put all uh, anyone who needs to be in that program through that training. Uh, shouldn't take very long at all. Great, awesome, good answer. Um, and then with that program, is there a way once the project, say a year after the project's over, that the owner has access, or is there a way that the files there and the documents there get dumped to a server, or how to walk me through that process so that we still have access to everything that we're doing in this this program you develop uh once this pro uh the project uh is can is finished um the way the program works is uh all of the data with one project is sort of siloed into that project and remains in that program forever um so you all will have access to all that information for the foreseeable future okay great thank you that's all all, all questions i have thank you thank you Brian. uh chris do you have any questions Actually, I have an additional one. On your site utilization, you talked about uh, on the crane utilization, restricting flying any loads over uh, Pacific. Can you talk about your approach to falling debris uh, along particularly the north facade, but any facade in general? Okay. Awesome question. Um, I'll actually direct that as well to our safety manager, Mr. Davio here. Uh, yes, sir. On that um, that north side, obviously we're flying no materials over live streets. Uh, on the north side, uh, we'll be um, utilizing nets and barriers uh, to prevent any material from falling. Uh, obviously, because we're not uh, swinging any loads over Pacific Avenue, it'll be no problem in terms of 
getting material into the building because nothing will be coming from that north side. So we can have 100% coverage on the north side. Okay, thank you. I Any had, other uh, questions two, from the judges? Think, Good. Yeah, Haley, this is, I have two two more questions, and then I think okay. we'll wrap this up. The first is, um, and looking at your Exhibit A4 GMP summary, looks like item 21 for roofing. It just indicates $1. Um, can you confirm, you know, is that an error, and, and do you all have the, the roofing cost included in your GMP? Mr. Brewer? Um, okay, you could you restate the uh, what bid form that was again? Yeah, it was the uh, step two GMP summary. The step two item GMP twenty one for roofing. Okay, yeah, that that's absolutely that's just a that's just a mistake in that pricing. It is included in our pricing. I yeah, I that is that is a mistake. That'll be fixed. But the price of roofing is included in our total right now. Okay, so your number at the very bottom does not change. Correct, sir. Okay, and then uh, our second, I think, uh, my second and final question here is on your uh, your schedule, your milestone schedule indicates a duration of 556 calendar days, um, but looking at your full-time staffing chart, uh, you have several of your individuals listed for 100 weeks. Um, can you confirm which is correct and and if there's an adjustment to your price, will it would it be uh, returned to us as the owner? Okay. Um, so I, I I can answer that question. Um, you said okay. Um, the milestone dates. The total duration of our projects would be 25 months, um, as stated in this presentation. And we are involving certain staff beforehand. Um, but as far as the 100, uh, 100 weeks goes, that was to allow for two weeks of vacation time in each year. So we, uh, I'll admit, I, I missed that. That was a mistake on my part in terms of adjusting uh, those week numbers. Okay, so we're to understand that your your schedule is 25 months and not the 556 days. That is correct. All right, thank well, you. This should um, course. All right, well, thank you. I think that brings us to time. All right. Um, great job, guys. And uh, I appreciate you. you taking all the time. How do we get out Clearly, you put a lot of work into this. So, great job. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for thank your you. time. Congratulations, guys. Um, if you can, just go ahead and sign off. That way you're not in as a panelist anymore. You're more than welcome to join back yes. on. But congratulations. Way to go. Thank you.